There we go. There we go. All right, thanks, Karen. So now it's time for our feature speaker. Who knows that we have a tradition here at the GNA? What is our tradition? That's right, this team. We sent our feature speaker all the way to the back. So, Dortha, start walking all the way to the back. Way past the exit sign. That way you can run all the way in and make that grand entrance. So, it was really, really unique how I met Dortha. I actually met her online through Facebook, of all places, right? This is where the importance of connecting on Facebook is because we have a lot of mutual friends that we know. We're, you know, we do a lot of networking all over Northern California, and we know people. How many of you here know Michael Estes and Timothy Bird, and a lot of those other, you know, great, wonderful networkers in the Central Valley and Sacramento area? Well, we connected, and I put out the note saying that we're looking for speakers, you know, in San Jose and all over the GNA. And Dortha sent me a message back. First one to reply, I'm like, yeah, absolutely. You know, I know we've been communicating through Facebook. I've heard a lot of great things about you through other people. If you want to come all the way to the Sacramento area, you're more than welcome to take that two and a half hour drive, whatever it is, right? Okay, so today is Sacramento Day in the Bay. And let's, we're going to read a brief, um, you know, bio here on Dortha. Dortha Hyde is passionate about helping others be successful. Born and raised in California, she began her first business at the age of 11, breeding hamsters and selling an offspring to local pets. Wow, that's pretty interesting. <laughs> she graduated from Loyola University of Chicago with a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology in 1998 and uh, received a Bachelor of Science in Criminal Justice in 2003 from the University of Nevada, Las Vegas. A serial entrepreneur. Wow, I'm, I'm really liking this. <laughs> Dortha runs a successful virtual consulting business and a web design and development business. She also serves as a leadership representative with Avon Products. She offers a variety of support to her clients from research and phone calls to web design and social media support. I'm done two out of the three paragraphs. Almost done here. <laughs> An ardent advocate for breast cancer cure, Dortha has walked in the Sacramento American Cancer Society making strides walk since 2006. In 2010, after losing a close friend to breast cancer, Dortha raised more than $2,000 and walked 40 miles in the Avon walk for breast cancer. Wow, Dortha and her best friend and husband Jason have coordinated medical screening clinics to benefit the Shrines Hospital for Children and in 2011 assisted 132 families in receiving medical care they needed. They currently serve as the webmaster for the then Ali uh, the uh, Shriners of Northern California. So, with that being said, on that note, like girl, please stand up and rise to your feet. Please rise to your feet and do a big warm GNA. Welcome to Dortha Hyde! Awesome welcome to Dortha. Thank you, the longest intro I ever gave, but I love it. Thanks for being here. Thank you. You're welcome. You said come prepared, so I brought my own here to take that's the uh, non-abbreviated version. Well, good uh, afternoon, everyone. My name is Dorotha Heiss, as Elias introduced me. I do have some handouts if uh, I can get somebody's assistance with that. Uh, whoever. Thank you. Thank you so much. Oh, no, it doesn't sit there. Thank you. So, there you go. So, there you go. <laughs> All right, so um, anyone here feel any kind of overwhelm in their business uh, balance, work life balance at home? Oh, yeah. That's to you. Okay. Come to the end of your day and your to do list is still miles long, perhaps. Anyone? Yeah. Okay. All right, so anyone in the room that finishes their to do list at the end of the day, their to do list is all crossed off? Like 90%. 90%? Nice. Anyone else? All right, so if, if you come to the end of the day and you have your to-do list completed, you do? Oh, no. Oh, I was like, wow. But it takes like 18 hours a day to do I that. I know. you got to get up at 4 and you're up till 2, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm in the right place. That's always good to know. I do have some notes here that I'm going to be referring to back and forth. And then I have your handout um, that I'll be referring to as well. So again, my name is Dorotha Heiss, and I want to talk to you about the importance of having a team to support you. And how much would it be worth to you if you could have a few extra hours in your day to be more productive? Lots. Lots. Could you put a dollar amount on it? I'm not sure if you could, but maybe. Two thousand dollars. Two thousand dollars. <laughs> All right. So I want to give you as much as I can while I'm here, and if you want to learn more, I promise I'll let you know how. First, I want to say a little about myself, and this is kind of a funny.
same story because it's a mixed audience, but I think you can go with it. I, uh, anyone ever been in a beauty pageant? No? Okay. I, I was, in, <laughs> it's kind of funny. I was in a Miss Illinois pageant when I was uh, at Loyola University, and I had <laughs> the most interesting experience because I was 18, very doe-eyed, had no idea what a beauty pageant was like. I had done them as a kid, but I had no idea what I was in for at the adult level. So I'm backstage getting ready for the formal gown part of the event, and I look over and there's this woman with duct tape running around her front, taping her down, right? So imagine my surprise at 18. I don't know anything about anything about what I'm doing. I just look over and I'm like, oh my god, she's duct taping her boobs. Down. Huh. Okay. So I really kind of didn't think about it any further until I started getting into doing what I'm doing for business owners because we don't know what we don't know. And that's kind of what I find with a lot of business owners, myself included. You know, we get into things and we don't know what we don't know. So <laughs> I, I kind of make the reference of duct taping your own boobs, guys, go with me here. <laughs> As, um, why the, you know, ouch, first of all, but it's the importance of why a team can be so, so great for you. To help support you, but also to be the person running around you with the duct tape instead of you doing it yourself. You guys with me? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys, I lost you. I'm off the I'm off the road. So, um, same thing with the movie Miss Congeniality. Have you guys all seen that? Yeah. Okay. So, you know how she had her team of stylists? Right, and that's how she said at the end of the movie, I think it was something like, you know, how did you do it all, and you pulled it all together, looked fabulous. It was my team of stylists, and I wish I would have had a Michael Caine in my corner when I was 18. I might have had a, a better chance, you know, of uh, maybe winning the pageant, but I did win Miss Congeniality, <laughs> out wow. of my ironic nature, Whoa. yes, I actually Whoa. did. Whoa! So, um... At this point, I would like to direct you to your handout to make sure everyone has one. Can you just wave it at me that you have it? Yeah. Okay, so my thing about how I got into doing this, I was a paralegal for 10 years, so it was my nature to be very research-oriented, help-focused. Um, I come from a place of service, just as my natural meaning. And when I got out of being a paralegal, after 10 grueling years, and uh, Long, long, long hours, long hours. Um, getting ready for trials, doing things for the attorneys, getting them prepared, all that. And I, I found it was kind of just a natural transition for me to get involved in helping business owners support them doing whatever it is that they do. And doing it virtually because I love the computer, I'm very computer oriented. And so as a result, I got into thinking, well, wouldn't it be great if I could clone myself? So I could have other people helping do what I do. Wouldn't it be great if you had 10 of you in your business? How much more productive you would be and how much more you could get done in a day and have that extra $2,000 a day? So um, until I get a little further along than Dolly, the sheep, um, I figured out that I had to have a team. So, <laughs> and that's myself as well. I, I do work as a virtual assistant, but I have my own team as well. I have five ladies right now on my team. And we all work very well together. We just kind of work projects back and forth. And that's, that's the beauty of doing what we do, working virtually in particular. So hiring a team, whether that's working with me or with someone, I do encourage you to work with someone. Uh, delegation matters because it allows you to free up your income producing activities, to do income producing activities, helps you get out of overwhelm. It allows you to have someone for the task that it's easy for them to do. So say you hate doing your social media updates. Someone else can be logging in as you, doing those updates for you, and then that frees you up to be out looking for other clients, doing other income producing activities. It's okay to delegate, okay? Turn to someone next to you and say, it's okay to delegate. It's okay, okay to delegate. Okay to delegate. Yeah. All right. I don't know, that doesn't sound very convincing. Do it one more time. It's okay to delegate. It's okay to delegate. Thank you. All right, so, and again, um, if you just turn to somebody to your right or left where you have somebody, one of you be A, one of you be B, and say that you don't have to do everything, and the other person can repeat yay, or woohoo, or whatever, some sort of affirmation back. So, just real quick, do that. Don't have to do everything. Yay! Yay! Woo! How'd that feel, you guys? Feels good. Awesome! Good. steps to uh, building a virtual effect, effective virtual team, excuse me, and this actually comes directly from my chapter in Women Entrepreneur 
extraordinaire, which I have over here on the table. I go into much more detail than I'm going to go into here. But basically, the steps that are listed there, one of the really important ones is the power of communicating with your team. Speaking the same language, and I'm not speaking about like whether you both speak English or Spanish or whatever, the same language as in if you're very, very technical, you need to be able to speak to a lay person's level of that same concept so that they can get what you need them to do. I have a client who wanted some changes on her website, and I went through this whole process, and we went back and forth, went back and forth, and it wasn't, well, we weren't on the same page. So I wasn't able to give her what she wanted because I didn't know what she wanted. So the importance on both parts, mine and the client's part, it's very, very critical to make sure that you have the right communication down. One thing I will also throw in here is email's a really hard format to have a conversation. You can't convey your emotion. So, <laughs> I think you like that. I'm clapping because ever since I came to California, it seems like Californians have to communicate via email or text message. And that's, that's very frustrating, especially yes. someone who spent time in sales. Mm -hmm. We call people. Yes. We talk to them. Yes. So I have a rule with my clients. If I don't understand and I ask you a few questions back and forth by email, I'm calling you. And we're going to have a conversation because I want to make sure I'm on the same page. I can't represent what you need if I don't know what you want. So that's my rule. So thank you for backing me up on that. Where did you move from? Chicago. Oh, that's cool. I'm in Chicago. Chicago. There you go. Um, so how to fix it is allow the time to figure it out. Realize it's going to take time because every new person you bring on your team there's a learning curve, and you need to be able to work within that and make sure that you do have that down pat. I have a client who can email me, and I don't, I don't take anything she says, you know, personally or anything like that because I've worked so long with her that I get when she says X, Y, Z, oh, okay, this is what she needs. But I don't have that with every client, so you know, you have to work it out. So, um, can I have one of the extra handouts there? I'm going to touch on all the steps I don't have memorized. There are a variety of ways you can do that. I have actually connected with several of my own teammates through Facebook and LinkedIn. I found several of my clients the same way, so I know it's a good place. Networking like this is also a really good, good way to find people. Prepare to delegate. Step three, I know that sounds funny. Prepare to delegate. It's not like you're planning to plan, but you are actually <laughs> going through and seeing what you can delegate so that you're able to more effectively give that teammate, okay, here's what I want you to do, and you have the steps down so you know exactly what they're going to be doing when you hand it off to them. Describe the terms and scope of the project. Talk about your costs, um, hourly rates, whether there's a, a retainer or if they get billed hourly. These are all things that you want to work out up front. And, and of course, deadlines, these are important. I have somebody send me something and say, here's my newsletter. Okay, when do you want it done by? <laughs> you know, so these are the things that if you don't give a deadline, you're not going to know. So, or the, per the person doing the work isn't going to know. The next step is keeping it legal. I recommend having an attorney as one of the people that you work with, uh, as small business owners. Oh, there, right back there. He's back there. There you go. There's your attorney. Go speak with him. Uh, with your contracts, non-disclosure, any other legal paperwork, you just want to make sure that you're you're keeping everything up to snuff because I've seen some things get sticky and it's not good. <laughs> so um, I've seen people's websites get taken hostage. I'm sure you've seen that as well. Um, so it's just something that you want to just you know use to protect yourself. Set a trial period. I'm a really big fan of this with my own team as well as with my clients. You want to make sure that you're a good fit with somebody. You don't want to sign on for someone with six months and you're like, oh my god, I can't work with you. So I recommend either one assignment or 30 days or whatever's comfortable for you. But that trial period is going to be really important because you're going to be able to establish a relationship and see how you work together. <coughs> Any questions so far? You guys are all intently listening. Yeah. How do you keep your team members in book? Because they're here in California, I'm so tell you. People kind of come and go a lot. I think that's part of the um, trial period. I have worked with some people who just haven't worked out, and then I've worked with others who are go getters. So I think it's looking for people who have the same qualities for me, the same type of qualities that I have. 
same personality, not exactly the same, because who means more of me? But um, having that kind of a, a similar meshing of personalities, we do a lot of emails together, and then I work very uh, closely with each person one on one. Does that answer your questions? Okay. Um, so establishing a well defined timeline, goals, and intentions. Again, this goes back to the I need my newsletter done, okay, by when? So, some of the bigger projects, they need to have a timeline. We have um, some clients that we do blog work for, and they set out a schedule of, say, six months. We need to know what the order of things are going to be, if we're going to do social media tie-ins with that as well. All those kinds of pieces that are going to be kind of critical for someone to need to know uh, from the team perspective. <clears throat> Collaborating with your team. This is another good one, because there are lots of ways you can collaborate, and maybe you guys all have other ideas. I, I gave a few tools here, like Google Docs, uh, Workflowy, TeamworkLive.com, uh, BusinessItOnline.com, Paligo, and RememberTheMilk.com. Those are all just places that you can work from uh, with your team and have a collaboration of ideas, projects, things that you're working on, tasks to assign to each other, things like that. And I think. All of those are free, if I recall. And my proofreading is coming out. I just saw a typo on my handout. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, establishing your preferred method of communication, whether it's once weekly phone calls, uh, maybe it's bi weekly, doing your emails, all that kind of stuff. I do recommend, I have a lot of clients that like to check in once a week. I have some clients that like to do um, once every two weeks. So I kind of just like to set that up at the beginning and you'll work out what's going to work for you and work for your team. So I just uh, put that in there because it's an important step. So establishing payment policies, billing frequency. I have some clients that have me bill them on a project by project basis because of their budgetary needs. I have other clients who I bill monthly. Really can depend. Um, one thing I'd like to point out with if you're having someone use retainers, is whether those hours carry over. And uh, I'm just over here. Um, whether those hours carry over, because I have heard of some people using a retainer service and not having those hours carry over. So it's kind of like your cell phone minutes, if you just think about it that way. But it's an important piece that you want to make sure you have that conversation. So now that you have all this extra free time, because you've got a team in place and they're helping you be more efficient, it's very exciting what's going on back here. We're opening windows to the oh, office. Thanks. I figure you guys have been here for a few years, you should know, right, Elias? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That's all right. I'm all for it. Okay. I'm describing the terms of the project. Yeah. So, I think you're working with a lot of people yeah. on a part time basis. Right. Uh, right. Uh, I come from a good background of entertainment industry, so you get a lot of interns and stuff. Yeah. 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 Those people oftentimes want to look for some kind of payback on their resume so they can say they're working this project and this project and that. So is that something that you can do for them after they've been there for three, four months, six months? Yeah. Supporters and so yeah, I, certainly. I'm, I'm negotiable in all things that I do. So, you know, as long as it's comfortable for both people I, or both parties involved, I can say definitely. Is it, is it the expected expectation then on both sides that you know, that person can move on and she can walk away with that? Right. You as a reference and it looks in the resume. Right. Okay. Right. And I, I also think um, that, that also covered, you know, goes into number five. It's um, yeah. using the non compete because I think that's another important piece. Sometimes people will leave a business. Yeah, yeah, and so that's another important piece to tie in with that. But yeah, I think definitely I'm, I'm always happy to give people a reference and, and vice versa. I, I like to ask my clients for references. So now that you have a really good team in place, you have all this extra free time to do all these income producing activities, what are you going to do? Ladies, share sure. a Thank you for taking a nap. Take a nap. Take a nap. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. You're, you're fired. <laughs> she said take a nap, and I said you're fired. <laughs> go to the beach. Go to the beach. Go on that board. Any other, or go to whatever interesting events that you would maybe find other people that you can connect with. Okay, great. Anyone else? Expand your skills. Expand skills. Maybe go back to school or something. Go to the beach. 
Anyone else? Yeah? Use your, uh, not only your clients, but also use your colleagues and your team members to go out and find you more business bring it in. Nice. Or uh, go to the beach and let your team work. There you go. I actually, I just went on vacation to Mexico for 10 days in March, and I came back, and I actually had clients to fill when I got back because my team was all set up when I left, that I came back and I was building clients, which was great because that's the whole point of having a team. <laughs> so, um, anyone maybe want to write a book or anything like that? One day. One day? Okay. One day I'm going to write a book about this whole experience. There you go. <laughs> the DNA experience. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So, it's good, yeah, a lifetime mini series, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> How often do you check in with your team? I mean, um, week? We're in con pretty constant con communication. On my way down here, I was getting emails from one of my ladies. Um, I would say probably at least once a day. Yeah. With my clients, though, a little bit less, just because, you know, once they give me a project, I'm on it, and then as needed, I'm checking in with them. So, um, one thing I will recommend. Oh, sorry. Yes, Liz. Um, yeah, it just came to me. Uh, my question is, how how do you um, kind of like screen your team members? Actually, like, do you have some kind of a interview process? Yes. It, yes. I one of my ladies on my team has a background in HR, and she is my official designated interviewer. So she goes through a structured interview with them. They send in their resume. And then we have a structured interview, and then after she decides one way or the other what she thinks, then it comes to me with her recommendations, and then I have an interview with them as well. And then we go from there. Yeah. Not a quick question. Um, your team members, are those employees or are those contractors? They're contractors. Contractors. Yep. Right. 1099s. Yeah. So when you got your first contractor or assistant, how difficult was it for you to for me? Not at all. That's <laughs> because I have to practice what I preach and I was ready when I hired my first lady on my team. I was very, very ready to hand some stuff off because I was very overwhelmed. So it gets to a point where I've had clients tell me that part of the reason why they hired me was because they knew they needed to delegate but they didn't know how or what to delegate and that's part of what I will work on with them. I'll go through like a brain dump with them and see what are the things that they're doing that they don't need to be spending their time on. And that's how we fill in where I can help them. Sometimes people just come to me and they already know what they need, but oftentimes they don't. So that's where we have that conversation. But at the time I, I hired my first contractor, totally ready. And I have no problems really pushing the control. Do you have another question? No. Oh, just head scratch. Sorry. Scratch this thing. <laughs> so, yeah, go ahead. How do you negotiate, and what's a fair um, wage for for something? For my my teammates? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, we have a conversation about what their skills are. Some people are coming to me as like you know, having no skills at all, and so I'm training them completely. Some have background in admin already, so it's just a matter of getting them acquainted with doing things totally virtually, you know, phone or email. I have a starting rate, we do between 15 and 20 an hour to start, and I actually am starting an academy where I'm going to be training people how to have their own business doing virtual assisting as well. So it's a whole process that I will go through. Assistance. Mm -hmm. That's a new, new hot um, it is. job. It's the number two job for stay-at-home moms, yeah. by the way, according to, I think, Redbook. So, any other questions? So um, I want to also empower you to know that it's okay to have help around your house. It's one of the things that I recommend people to. I've been coached on that to get someone in to clean your house or just help out a few hours a week. It's a really good way to start being able to relinquish some of the control, like you were talking about with Elizabeth. And it, it is, I mean, because we feel like we have to do it all, right? And so it's it's kind of a good first step, and it frees up your time to be in your business more. So, if you are on board to use a VA, I'm going to have you guys do a quick little exercise with the partner to whichever side is more convenient. If you were to use a virtual assistant, what would you do with your free time? So, take just a quick minute and share with your partner and then come back with me. Person with the shortest hair goes first. <laughs> oh, well, that's a no brainer. <laughs> Can you give me a 
question one more time? Yeah, if you were to hire a virtual assistant, what would you do with your free time? And I'm calling the free time what you're getting them to do. So what would you do in your business? Okay. I'll be meeting more. I'll be meeting more. I'll be meeting Yeah, beautiful. Okay, just want to make sure. Am I eligible? Yes. <laughs> so on the back of your card, if you would write a number one, if you would like to have an email copy of my special report, which is about identifying your services and then creating products from that, 
I will email that to you. So write a number one on the back if you would like that. If you'd like to learn more about how to work with a uh, team within your business, I'd be happy to, to do a quick phone consult with you. You can write a number two on the back of your card for that. And if you know of another organization that could benefit from a lovely talk by me, I would be happy to, to chat with you about that. You can write a number three. So if you need me to go through those again, number one is my special report on identifying your services. Number two, thank you guys. Such a helpful group of lives. So helpful, look at that. He's the GNA advocate. That's awesome. Look at him. Yeah. And then number two is if you'd like to learn more about how I can help support you in your business. And number three is if you know of another organization that could benefit from a talk from me, uh, write that down and I'll connect with you on any of those. Oh. Or if you just want to enter Wayne, just drop a card in. <laughs> Did you have a question, Liz? No, but um, the last statement I you had. Oh, oh, great. Thank you so much. All right. So, Elias, do you want to be the, the, the picker or should I be the picker because you put your card in? Don't want to think oh, it. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't want to compromise, you know. <laughs> the integrity of the drawing. I know how my card feels. It's nice and glossy. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah, I don't have anyone's card today, so I'll be completely uh, arbitrary. Anyone else get their cards in? Anyone's in? We're, since we're picking on Elizabeth today. Yeah. How about, how about you have her have her do the drawing? Yeah. Pick the biggest one. Nice. You don't have to realize. <laughs> that feels like a postcard. It's alright. Uh, <laughs> 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 and, and I will autograph it for you too. So just if you win, uh, hang out for a minute and I'll autograph it for you. Oh, oh wonderful. Yay. Okay, we're going to do Woman Entrepreneur Extraordinaire first. <laughs> Drum roll, please. And the winner is... That is for me. Ludo! All right! And then for the copy of Entrepreneur Extraordinaire... Oh. It is... Liz! Liz! Liz. Wow! your time and letting me share with you how to work within the, within the team and I hope the information I provided was helpful. So I'd love to chat with you more and learn about how I can help you move your business forward. All right. Woo!